A big part of these pieces, these bands of, of horizontal color, is really like the width of the bands, how far apart they are from each other. And I'm seeing like these negative spaces here as like syncopation, like in jazz, like we've got like the breath, you know, like the syncopation, which is like the space that doesn't have anything. So that's like where you take a breath in rhythm. And um, so these are all very rhythmic. And this space in between has got to make these two panels make sense. So I'm wanting to have something warm in here and I've got this opportunity for reflected light. Right here, I'm trying it out on the top. So that's like, that's the reflected orange color on the top. And here I'm gonna test it on the bottom. So this is pretty much the process of like putting something on, looking at it. Sometimes for a really long time, taking it off, you know, and um, until it literally sings, you know. I, when I first came to New York City, which was in uh, 1986, when I was, uh, was 22, my first loft was 24th between 10th and 11th, which is now the center of the art world. And I, I lived above uh, the Plexi, Plexi Craft, which is a plexiglass factory, and they were throwing out plexiglass. And next door was Metropolitan Lumber, and they were throwing out plywood. And I was working for uh, an artist assisting him named Joseph Amar, who was very important to me. And he was working with beeswax and lead, kind of like in the arte povera um, tradition. And um, so uh, I was helping him with his beeswax work, so I was, I was learning about that medium. And at the same time, there was a Donald Judd retrospective up um, at the Whitney. And, uh, and I saw that, and it kind of, it, it all came together. Um, I, was, I started by working with plexiglass and routing it, and I was building uh, plywood shelves. And um, the idea was that the light would move across the, the routed lines and move the lines. Um, but then, that's, then I saw Donald Judd's work and I saw how he had actually captured, was able to capture light uh, in this box. And so I started building these boxes. Uh, upstairs on the top floor was an antique dealer who had a full on wood shop. And he taught me how to use the table saw. And a very important part of these pieces is my actually constructing them and what happens when, when, when I build something. They're very, they look very pristine, but they're really rough. And I like the fact that it's important to me to have the hand in it. I don't purposely try to be messy. I'm actually trying to be as precise as I can, but I'm human, which is another part of this work that is, is very important to me is uh, that it's about a human experience and it's coming from a human experience and it's viewed through a human experience. The way I make the pieces came together back then, which is 30 years ago. And since then, I continue to, to learn and refine. And this, this is where I'm at most recently. So in the last couple of years, um, there are now places where there's no wax at all. And that allows, I realized that allows the light to come in and uh, more so than it did when it was uh, an opaque uh, surface. So that's a new development in these works. Not to mention just the, the use of, uh, of duct tape. <laughs> I'm using duct tape. I'm using, because um, I couldn't get, I can get that color. I couldn't get that tone in a wax. And I like the idea of transforming mundane materials into something that is perceivably sublime, so they transcend their materiality and become something completely different and their own. For me, the whole thing needs to make sense and exist on, be able to exist on its own before it's, before it's a completed work. You know, that's really the only criteria, is does this, does this make sense? That's for me personally, I know a lot of work uh, from other, other people make work that has the complete opposite, like they don't, they don't want it to make sense, they don't want you to be comfortable while you're looking at your work. For me, the goal is really comfort, like I, I'm constantly using the horizon. I go to the beach, people are just sitting there, man, and they just stare at that horizon. And they stare at that horizon because it's grounding, and it gives you, uh, and it's a place to, uh, to have strength, and you know, maybe you can come up with answers, you know. 